Hello, this is Nick from Breaker Press Games, and I wanted to talk to you today about the Protectorate of Genulane, which is up on Kickstarter right now. I wrote a couple of different outlines for Protectorate Design Diaries, because I'm sure people have some questions about how a one-on-one -on -one adventure plays and how it is written and designed. So, the first uh, outline that I wrote is on the birth of the idea. And I wanted to talk about kind of the perfect storm of things that were happening at the same time that resulted in this particular adventure. So, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is listening to my player's wishes. It just so happened that my one player, Shane, uh, his character, Alun, was transitioning from being a zero level peasant to becoming a first level character. And he wanted to become a cleric, but he wanted to see the path of going from that peasant to becoming the cleric. And so he said to me, he's like, can I have a, a you know, a one-on-one -on -one experience where I get to see that happen and go through the, go through the training? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And the reason why I was so game for this was in part because of my previous uh, uh, past with AD&D and, you know, there were things where that was alluded to in like the DM guide, DM's guide and the player's handbook, um, but also uh, the idea in DCC of questing for it and um, playing through those types of things. But additionally, a month before I had gotten in the mail my Kickstarter reward for the House of Red Doors by James Posnell Jr. And I had already run this adventure six, seven, eight times and was super excited about it. You figure if you run something seven or eight times, you're excited about it, especially if it's in the first month that you have it. Um, but this adventure, it was really exciting and inspiring to me because one, I had never run a one-on-one -on -one adventure before. Uh, two, because it has a lot of random elements so that every time you play it, it's different. In fact, out of those seven or eight times that I've <clears throat> run the adventure, five of them were the same person. Uh, Alex, who at the time was not yet our editor and uh, shortly thereafter became our editor, Alex was kind of enthralled by this adventure uh, because of the fact that the first time he played it, he died 20 minutes in, and then the second time he played it, he died 25 minutes in. And then there was this mindset of, I need to beat the game. And he got very excited about this. And he would take detailed notes and was trying to uh, figure out how to solve the adventure. But one of the things that makes the adventure so unique is that uh, in order to represent the fates uh, uh, affecting your destiny, there's random roles that change the parameters of what is victory in different circumstances. And so this really resulted in Alex kind of being set up to fail because of the fact that he was trying to use his prior knowledge for a whole new destiny for a brand new character. And so uh, it made it extremely challenging and at, at the time that the last time we had run him through, he didn't die, he survived, but did not succeed in beating the adventure. And so he still wanted to keep going back in for more. And I love that about it. So uh, the other thing about the House of Red Doors and where the Protectorate of Genuine is different from it is that the House of Red Doors was designed as a tournament adventure. And so there's point scoring. And as I mentioned, he would die 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in, 30 minutes in. Um, depending on, on you know what prior knowledge he had and what have you. And if you're trying to train to go from zero level to first level and have that experience uh, to just die outright on you know a single mistake really isn't wasn't going to give Shane the experience that he was looking for. And so I needed to take the premise of the House of Red Doors and change it so that, uh, it was less like the Dragon's Lair video game uh, where you have to perform each thing exactly right or you die, which is kind of how the House of Red Doors is, um, and do something that was 
different uh, in order to make it so that you could, uh, you know, fail forward. So the other thing, before we get into that in great detail, the other thing that transpired at the same time was this was all happening just over a year ago, and we had come out of lockdown, and everybody was kind of stir-crazy. And a lot of people, one of the first things they did, because they couldn't go to you know movie theaters and what have you, they started going hiking. And my partner and I were no exception. And one of the places that we went hiking is called Seven Bridges in South Milwaukee. And I'm going to show you some snippets of what that looks like. So as you can see, we've got a field stone stairway with some, uh, some wood to frame the uh, stonework uh, that goes up into a hill. The place is called Seven Bridges because there's a bunch of uh, interconnected streams that go out to Lake Michigan. And it is a very, a very beautiful but also very D&D &D place to go hiking uh, because of all of these stairways and streams. And one of the things that, and I am going to make fun of myself uh, for being 47 years old and being the person that's like, oh, there is a tree across this stream. I need to walk across it. Uh, that's just the type of person I am, a, an adult child. Uh, but... It is a place that is just very exciting from a point of inspiration if you love things like D&D. So, or in my case, DCC. That being said, let me s slide us back to my face. All right. So, Seven Bridges... The House of Red Doors, Shane wanting a custom adventure, and all of a sudden my brain is swirling. In the span of a week, I wrote 24 pages of content. And that 24 pages of content uh, morphed into 45 pages of content over the coming months. And that is the basis of the Protectorate of Genuine. Now, one of the other things that was very important in the design philosophy and the birth of the idea behind this is that I absolutely love obstacle course shows like Takeshi's Castle, uh, American Ninja Warrior, those TV shows that have people throwing themselves uh, across different obstacles and trying to beat them. I love it. And that is one of those things that is difficult to represent in an RPG. And so I needed to be able to do something like cross a log without it having just a single pass fail die roll. There was another part to the inspiration that happened through all of this. And it just so happened that Matt Colville, uh, while I was uh, writing this, I stumbled upon, he had just released two separate videos, one on multiple fail states and one on one-on-one D&D. And uh, though I disagree with some of his thoughts, because he thinks that a an adventure like The House of Red Doors, uh, where you make a single roll and you fail and you die, uh, is not fun, and I will argue that The House of Red Doors is very fun, uh, and uh, I enjoy a certain level of lethality, but that's because I am not crafting a lengthy story necessarily with a zero-level character. Uh, this may be the you know one time that they go into the meat grinder and they die gloriously, and it's beautiful. Um, but there are other times, like in the case of a loon, where it's a training scenario, and I want there to be the ability for a loon to walk out of this being battered and exhausted, but not dead. And some of the things that I did early on in the adventure writing was to use a lot of subdual damage, uh, to, uh, to have... Uh, situations where 
it wasn't just a singular pass and fail. And luckily, DCC already had a mechanic for that, but not in skill checks. Um, it was in casting. So when you are casting a spell, if you roll a one, uh, something bad happens. If you if you get a nine, to, or excuse me, a uh, two to an eleven, uh, you just fail at casting the spell. And then anything above an eleven, there are increasing levels of success. And so I just took that concept and I applied it to different things like trying to cross a log. And so uh, there are um, a multiple fail states uh, instead of it being from 2 to 11 that, uh, that uh, it just fails. Uh, I did created multiple sections where... Uh, you know, you fail and you take lethal damage, you fail and you take subdual damage, you fail um, because you chicken out and you go back uh, back over the log and you have to start over again. And so by creating these, these charts, I was able to create multiple fail states and be able to impart that to a judge or a dungeon master um, without uh, having them putting all of the work on them to to create all of this all of this content on the fly of how to have multiple fail states. And so yeah, I, I, I felt that this was a really a really good solution. And somebody could take take these charts and if you know the same character is going across it multiple times, they just embellish upon uh, the the idea behind what is happening in that particular fail state. And so, yeah, ultimately, when I ran this for Shane, uh, you know, it being the first time being run, there were some quirks and there were some things where we were like, oh, you know, we need to flesh this out or expand it. Plus, there was at the time, there was only seven encounters. Now there's 13. Maybe there will be more. Um, but ultimately, the... The goal was to create a training scenario where the goal was not live or die. The goal was to be able to walk away from it with experience and valuable experience, but also have a sense of tension and threat. And I think that we really succeeded in doing that, especially as time has gone on and we've been able to tweak things because at, at this point we've you know run the adventure like 20 times. And so we have a really good idea. Similar to the House of Red Doors, it also has a lot of randomness. And so you know if you get to this log uh, uh, one time, there might be an adversary that you have to fight or, or a... Uh, a um, a uh, some other uh, some other thing that takes place that uh, makes the adventure more or the encounter more difficult or less difficult. Um, but ultimately, uh, the idea is that it is slightly different every time you play. The other thing is is that you're only going to, as you're going along the path, you're only going to have seven encounters. You're going to have the start of the adventure, the end of the adventure, that's two encounters, and then five encounters that you're going to choose out of a, that the player is going to choose out of a deck in between. And so that way, those 13 encounters that are written, um, you can end up with a different series of encounters every single time. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was the birth of the idea, was listening to Shane and, you know, being like, oh, you know, you, you want to have a one-on-one -on -one experience? I want to make that one ex one -on one-on-one experience possible and make it awesome. And it just so happened that the House of Red Doors was there. Matt Colville's videos on one-on-one D&D &D and multiple fail states were there. And Seven Bridges Trail in South Milwaukee were there all at the same time. And boom, it just exploded into uh, what we are trying to kickstart now, which is the Protectorate of Genulane. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into uh, into what the adventure is all about. And 
uh, particularly the uh, the Path of the Valorous section. Um, I do want to talk about more of the adventure in detail, and as I said, I've got a couple of outlines written here. Uh, thank you for supporting uh, Breaker Press Games and supporting the Protectorate of Genuine. Uh We really appreciate uh, your support. Um, yeah, if... Uh, you have any questions, please, please, please put them in the comments, either here on YouTube or on the uh, Protectorate uh, Kickstarter page. And uh, yeah, uh, we just, we appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for supporting Indie Games and Indie Game Designers. This is Nick from Breaker Press Games, signing off. Take care. Bye.